Hi everybody, this is part two of the series of how to do your first Instagram Live. In part one, we talked about how to plan out the content. Make sure that you watch that video here. And today we're talking about how you can actually prep for your Instagram Live. So let's get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Liz and I release videos every Tuesday talking about how you can add video to your business. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you never miss any of my future content. Now in the first part of this video series, we talked about what type of content you can actually use for Instagram Live. Because I hear people telling me all the time, Liz, I'd love to go live, but I don't know what to talk about there. Don't worry, I've got you covered in that video because there are so many different things that you can talk about when you are interacting live with your audience. Once you've got an idea of that down, the next thing that you want to do is actually start preparing for the live. The last thing that you want to do is just click live on your phone and then just hope for the best. Remember, this is a live environment. There are no take backs. The only thing that you could possibly do is delete the entire thing if you're not happy with it. Rather than getting to that point, let's spend a little bit of time thinking about how you can prepare the best way for your live so that you can do it seamlessly and then be very, very happy with the work that you've done. Let's jump right into it. Now, the first thing we want to do is to prep our environment. Luckily, most of us do our Instagram lives on our mobile, which gives us the flexibility to walk around our house or our space and find a nice spot to do this from. One of the main considerations there in your environment is that you don't have clutter or anything distracting behind you, and also that you have the best lighting possible. You absolutely do not need to invest in expensive lighting just to do an Instagram Live. The best thing you can do is find a window that you can face at somewhat of a 45 degree angle so that you get the nice, natural, flattering, soft light on your face. If you're in a room that doesn't have any windows, then of course take a lamp and then just place that behind your device so that it is shining lightly onto you. The last thing you want to do with your lighting is have the light behind you, meaning be sitting in front of a window where the light is actually just lighting the back of your head. We've seen this time and time again. You want the lighting to be hitting your face on a nice natural angle. The other thing you want to do is to stabilize your device. We've all watched live streams where the device is shaking and shaking and shaking because the person has not stabilized it first, and that is tiring to watch. It's easy nowadays to just get an affordable tripod off of Amazon, and that will actually solve your problem for every other future video you want to make too. In the meantime, you can stabilize your device by just propping it up on a table or a bookshelf, or just stabilizing it with some other items so that it doesn't topple over. Of course, along with that, you want to check in the camera that you are positioned and seated the right way. You don't need too much space around you, but you don't want to be right at the edges of the frame either. If you have some nice artwork or something nice on the wall behind you, then it is absolutely fine to have some extra headspace. Otherwise, try not to aim to have too much of a blank wall behind you just above your head. So position yourself so that you look like you are somewhat comfortably filling the frame. This is also nicer for the person to watch because it gives a bit more of a close connected look when they actually watch you in the live stream. Now, something that some of us forget to do is to charge our device fully before we actually go live. Going live drains the battery like you wouldn't believe. Sometimes you start out with 100 and by the time you're done, you're at 25% of your battery. So make sure that it is fully charged and ready and rearing to go. And if you're using any other type of artificial lights, then that of course also needs a strong bulb in it and to be all plugged in and ready. Now, not only does the live stream take a lot of your battery power, it also takes up a lot of bandwidth. So if you are doing a live stream for the first time, or if you're doing a really important live stream where you're interviewing somebody or you're announcing something special, then if possible, you can ask the other family members that live with you to try to stay off the internet for 10 or 15 minutes. That would really help just to free up a little bit of bandwidth so that you can actually have a nice, clean connection without any disturbance throughout. Now, Instagram recently released a new feature that is super handy if you haven't done a lot of live streams before. And that is you can actually set your settings to just do a private live stream only for yourself. This allows you to test out all of the features to see exactly how to start it, how to stop it, how to position yourself, what it actually looks like with the lighting. You can do all of this and have a full live stream there, but then it's only private to you so that you can watch it back. It won't go public. Nobody will ever know that you did that. This is really handy. So before you do your first live stream, try to test it out with this private setting first. Once you're actually happy with that product, then you can just toggle to the public setting, which means that the next time you go live, that will be announced to your public audience for everyone to see. 
Now, no one in the world should be going live without actually preparing some points in advance. If you are a celebrity and you have a very forgiving audience, then you can do this. But otherwise, for the rest of us, your audience will not feel happy about it if they jump on to watch you live and you have zero idea or preparation behind what it is you want to say. This is a recipe for causing you to ramble on and on and basically wasting the viewer's time. Instead of that, spend time in advance plotting out a couple of points. Review those points over and over and over so that you can actually just have two or three bullet points handy while you are going live. You can keep that handy on a piece of paper next to you, or you can try to jot out a couple of points in a few words, just on a small piece of paper, and then tape that next to your camera lens on your actual device. I highly recommend that you do not try to script out any notes for yourself in long sentences. This will basically result in you reading your notes while the audience is watching you and waiting for this to end. Try to be as natural as possible and the best way to do that is just to keep a couple of bullet points handy. Now the last way that you can prepare for your live stream is to have a title, description, and your cover graphic ready in advance. Once you are complete your actual live stream, the next screen will allow you to either share that to your feed right away or download it or delete it. That is not the time for you to be thinking about what is the perfect title, what is the perfect caption, doing your hashtag research, making a cover graphic. You want to just put out your live stream right away and have all of your assets ready. There have been times in the past where I have not had this ready and then I scramble around back and forth between different screens trying to prepare this and I end up losing the live stream in the middle. This is technology, we can't take anything for granted. So in advance, prepare all of those type of written contents and any of the graphics that you want to use for the cover. Now sometimes people post Instagram lives without any cover graphic. So that means when your audience goes to your feed, they will just see you there, just looking like you are getting ready to talk, and that's perfectly fine. Or if you're looking for a bit of an aesthetic look that matches everything else in your account, of course you can use a tool like Canva to create a graphic that is shaped in the same dimensions as an Instagram story and make a nice cover graphic for yourself just with the title and possibly what it is you're going to be talking about. Once you have all that saved on your phone, then you can just pull it right at that moment just before you post it for your audience to watch on your feed. Now we're taking a quick break here for me to remind you that you should really subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning how to use video the best way for your business. Not only that, but a live stream is not really the first thing that you should attempt if you are new to video for your business. So to help you out, I have a free resource that I can send you that'll show you the top three videos that you can get started with right away. Make sure that you look for that in the description below. So let's jump back to our video. Now, anyone who's experienced with going live on any of the social platforms will tell you that the preparation can sometimes make or break the success of your live stream. If you already have a little bit of anxiety or hesitancy about doing a live, do not skip the importance of the preparation. This is really going to make you feel like you are showing up with great confidence and it'll really show in the overall production that you are putting on there for your audience. They will feel enticed and motivated to come and watch your next live stream as well after that because they will understand that it is a nice valuable experience for them and that you have prepared well for that. If you missed the first part of this video, make sure that you check that out here where I give you some ideas about what type of content you can use for your live stream. Keep an eye out for the next piece in this series where I am talking about the actual live element and what you have to think about when you are live there in front of everybody. Don't forget to catch that video as that comes up. Set your notifications so that you get notified right away when that releases. Make sure that you like this video and share it off with one of your friends who's new to using video and don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Until next time, take care.